Hey, it's an astronaut astronomy. Wait, something looks weird. Nina, can you rotate the camera? That's better. All right, let's remove that. All right, let's rotate that off. This is the ZWO car, the product designed to teach you how to say the word car in an Australian accent. Car. Car. Uh, thanks, Dylan. Its secondary function is as a camera angle adjuster. ZW sent this to me back in January to test, and I'm a little bit behind on my videos, so thanks to ZW for sending this to me and for waiting this long for a review. This was first available for pre-ordering back in December, and although it's almost April, it's still on pre-order status, but I believe they're releasing it really soon. And when it was first released, it was on sale for $300, but thanks to some stable genius and his tariffs, the price has jumped $50 to $350. And whether it's $300 to $350, is this still worth purchasing? Many telescopes nowadays come with manual camera angle adjusters, like this one on my Ascar 71F, but even if it didn't, there are ways to reposition the camera even without it. I believe that manually adjusting your camera angle will fit about 99% of scenarios. The only two scenarios that I can think of where you may want something automatic is when you have like a remote setup, such as if you're setting it to star front or if you have your own remote setup somewhere else, or you're feeling really lazy. So let's dive into how this product works, what I feel about it, and then I'll end up deciding whether or not to purchase this. Because as of this moment, this is still a loaner product, but ZWO did give me the option to purchase this. So there's not much to unbox. You get the CAA and M48 adapter. It already has the M54 adapter installed, an Allen wrench, a quick guide, and a USB-C cable. Closer look shows that the M54 adapter on this side, and when I turn it around, there's an M54 threading here too. The bottom has some nice labeling that tells you where the camera and the scope should connect. Imagine installing this the wrong way and turning your mount upside down. On this side, we have the hand controller port and a USB-C port that makes this thing work. This doesn't require additional power and it can turn seven and a half degrees per second and it can handle up to five kilograms or about 11 pounds of weight while weighing just 465 grams or a little over a pound. I don't have a camera that can attach to the M54 adapter, so I'm going to quickly swap this out and install an M48 adapter. So this part is pretty simple. This is 16.5 millimeters thick, so this replaces the 16 and a half millimeter spacer that comes with most Astro cams. Or if you have an off-axis guide, it'll replace the OAG. And I know for a lot of people that has been one of the biggest complaints about this setup because if you use this, you won't be able to use an off-axis guider. So having to choose between an OAG and a CAW could be difficult, so maybe by the end of this video you'll decide what will work for you. And of course you can go around using the OAG by using an actual guide scope, that's pretty much what I end up doing. The other side by default is an M54 female thread that goes into your telescope. And this is my first gripe with this thing. I have quite a few telescopes and they all eventually adapt down to M48 or M42 threads. M54 could may as well be the future, but I'm not there, and if I'm not there, I don't think that most people are there either. And my complaint isn't about this thread being M54, it's the fact that ZWO did not provide an adapter ring. So if you don't already have one that comes with your other gear, you'll have to buy one for another $16. So I ended up buying this cheaper for 10 bucks. I thought I was really smart by saving $6 per shipping, but I didn't realize that this has a lip to it, so it doesn't actually go all the way into the thread. So it makes that so that my telescope isn't flush against this. And its thickness is about three and a half millimeters, so it adds three and a half millimeters of back focus to my imaging train. For most setups, that will be a problem because you'll end up getting stars that look weird. But for my Ascar 71F, which is a quadruplet, back focus doesn't matter. So as long as I can get focus, I'll have sharp stars all across the board. But that means that I can't use my reducer, which has a 55 millimeters of back focus requirement. So I didn't use a reducer for my test. I just plugged this into my Ascar 71F, got focus, and used it that way. So just a warning that if you don't have an M54 to M48 adapter that can connect to your telescope, you may end up spending a little bit more money. And I know it's kind of a big complaint for, what, $6 plus shipping, but this hobby is like 90% adapters, and I am tired of it. The fun thing I found is that the threads on the inside of the M54 adapter that comes with the Ka is actually M48. So I could have actually attached this in reverse, and it only adds 2.5 millimeters instead of 3.5 millimeters of back focus. Life hack. And my publicist friend told me that if you enjoyed that life hack, like this video and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to support me further, consider joining this channel as a member by clicking the join button below. 
Now moving on to installing this on my Ascar 71F. It's super simple, you know, I check the label at the bottom and I twist the car onto the back of my 71F. I have the M54 to M48 adapter already installed. I use the manual rotator to reposition the car. Then I install my filter drawer and finally my camera goes here. Super simple. I have 58.5 millimeters of back focus here thanks to the extra adapter, but Again, quadruplet, doesn't matter. And this also actually works really well with my Edge HD8, which has a 133.35 millimeters of back focus requirement without a reducer. But I think that you'll get similar issues if you try to swap out the CA4 and OAG. Installing this is the same. I have the camera back installed and I have the CA and then my filter drawer and finally my camera. If I didn't have that extra 3.5 millimeters from the M54 to M48 thread, this would have been perfect at 133.35 millimeters of back focus. Since I have so much to work with, I could probably figure out what other adapters I can use. And I will refer to my previous complaint about this hobby being mostly adapters. When running this in Nina or similar capture software, make sure you have the updated ASCOM driver from ZWO. Then in Nina, it'll appear on the list in the rotator section. I already focused my setup so we don't have to spend time on that here. So make sure that your setup is in focus before you start using your rotator. In the UI here, we have access to the mechanical range and we can select between full 180 degrees and 90 degrees. You can also set the mechanical position manually and then see the rotator rotato. Here's a quick look at what it looks like in action outside. To properly use a rotator, we'll use the framing tab. I'll find M81, and once that loads, I'll click to determine the location of my camera, and my setup will take a quick picture to figure out how I'm currently oriented. So that's actually pretty good. And I'll actually use the rotation slider and see if I can get this other galaxy down here in there. And then I'll click on the drop down next to the slew and center button and click slew, center, and rotate. Then I'll let Nina plate solve and do its thing where it'll find the object, center it, and then rotate my rotator to make sure that I am oriented the way I'm telling it to be oriented. Now we can go back to the rotator tab and now we can see two position markers, a mechanical position and a sky position. They'll both be super useful when you take flats because you'll want to get them exactly correct. Looking at the imaging tab, I can see all of my objects. Beautiful. Testing this in the field made me feel really lazy and I love feeling lazy, it's kind of addictive. But is it worth it? Let's quickly make a pros and cons list and then see if that'll help me decide. So one pro that I listed already is that this would be great for remote observatories. Like if you're sending it to Starfront or to one of the other remote observatories in Utah or Nevada, I don't know the names of those by heart, this will be super useful if you're trying to get that perfect shot from thousands of miles away. One of the great benefits of using the car is framing an object across multiple nights. This is especially helpful if you have a telescope that has spider veins that give you diffraction spikes. It'll help you frame the object so that these diffraction spikes are in the same spot every single time. Another benefit of the car is that if you're taking flat frames, you have the orientation of the camera recorded so you can have the imaging train rotated the exact same way when you're taking your flats later on. And the fourth benefit is that your friends may think you're cool. Now let's talk about some of the cons. So the first con I'm going to say is the price. It already jumped by $50, so it's $350. Plus, again, if you don't have an adapter ring, an M54 to M48 adapter, and you don't have an M54 setup, you're going to have to spend some extra money to make everything work. I previously listed being able to rotate the camera for your flat frames as a pro, but it's also kind of a con. Because if you have the freedom to rotate your setup willy-nilly and you rotated your imaging train four times across a night, you'll have to make sure that when you take flat frames, you take four sets of flat frames for every rotation for your images. Otherwise, the specks of dust and other things that need flat frames, they'll be out of whack if you just take one set. So that adds time, that adds a little bit more complexity, and I'm listing it as a con because for me personally, it's not worth it, but is it worth it to you? I already talked about this, but a huge con of this is not being able to use an OAG for most setups. I know a lot of people rely on an off-axis guider for guiding because that gives you the best guiding numbers. And that's because you don't have any kind of flexure in that kind of system. So in that case, you need to get rid of an OAG. That means you need to add a guide scope that adds more weight to your rig. It's an extra setup, extra system. So that may not be worth it for most people. 
But since I used an Ascar 71F, which is a flat field quadruplet, I may have been able to get away with using an OAG, a SCA, and a filter drawer without any issues. I haven't tested that out, but I should at some point if I decide to keep this and I have this for testing later on. And the last con that I can think of is, will this make us too lazy? I mainly do astrophotography for my backyard and other times I'll go into my astronomy club's field. Sometimes I'll travel with my gear, but I'm always near my setup. And if I need to adjust the camera angle, to take the perfect shot, I will go out and manually rotate it. And normally I'll just stick with whatever rotation I pick first. So a ka for me is definitely not a need. It's more of a maybe want. Now I think I need to decide whether or not to buy this and keep it. And although this probably won't get a lot of use from me, I think I'll purchase it and keep it. And I don't have any immediate plans, but maybe one day I'll send a rig down to Starfront Observatories in Portal 1, Texas. And that's a huge maybe, but if I were to send it, it would be cool to send it down with a rotator. So I'm very interested in hearing your thoughts about the car. Do you have one? Do you plan on getting one? Sh should I send this back? Thank you for spending some time with me. And if you'd like to spend some more time with me outside of YouTube and you use Discord, check the description for a link to our Discord server where we have a growing community and we would love to have you there. Thanks to ZWO for sending me the car to test and thanks to Dylan O'Donnell for his cameo earlier in the video. I have his channel link in the description below, so check him out. He's an up and coming YouTuber. Until next time, clear skies.